Music Revolutionaries. Hi there. Following on from Luke and Christian's discussions in the previous video about sound recording, I'd like to explore one of the greatest revolutions in the history of music, which came about through the invention of technology to record sound. Sound is fleeting. You can't see it. You can't touch it. It's there and then it's gone. So what's the point of recording sound? Recorded music is so ubiquitous today that you've probably never considered this question. It comes from the desire to hold on to something that otherwise will be lost. It's a struggle against impermanence, a struggle even against death itself. The origins of recording lie in the 19th century, around the same time as people were trying to develop technologies to hold on to the visual world, like photography and film. Sound recording was not a revolution brought about by one person. Many people contributed to the development of sound recording technology we have today. But the leader of this revolution was a modest French typesetter and bookseller, Léon Scott. Probably because he was in the printing business, Scott thought of recording as a kind of writing. That's why he called the machine the phonotograph, coming from Greek and meaning sound writing itself. His device, which he patented in 1857, drew lines on lamp black that are similar to the waveforms you'd see today on the screen if you're using digital editing software. Strange as it may seem, Scott didn't invent any way of converting his recordings back into sound. Maybe he didn't think it was possible. But actually, his recordings can and have been turned back into sound recently using modern technology. The honour of inventing a machine that could both record and play back sound was shared almost simultaneously by two men, Charles Cross in France and Thomas Edison in the United States. Now, Cross was a poet, a dreamer and a drunk. Apparently, he drank 22 glasses of absinthe a day. He invented the process for colour photography, as well as describing the workings of a sound recording device he called the paleophone, meaning old sound. But he never got around to building one. Probably he was too drunk to do so. So the first working device was produced by Thomas Edison. He called it the phonograph, meaning sound writing. It went through various phases of development, initially recording on cylinders covered with tin foil, and then wax. Unlike Charles Cross, Edison was a sober and shrewd businessman who marketed his invention very successfully. Another important contributor was Emil Berliner, who invented an early microphone and also the format of the disc, which eventually replaced the cylinder. What's interesting about all these early recording devices is that their inventors didn't think of them as a means of distributing music. They were more interested in using them as an archive of things of historical importance. However, in the early 20th century, as more and more people had phonographs and gramophones in their homes, it became clear that a lot of money could be made out of selling recorded music. The history of recorded sound is the history of the devices that were made to capture sound and the media that were developed to store it. Recording became electric in the 1920s which led to a significant improvement in audio quality. Old 78 RPM discs with a maximum duration of about five minutes were replaced in the 1950s by LPs and singles, which allowed more music to be stored on one disc, and also again with an increase in audio quality. Around the same time, magnetic tape became widely available. It had been developed in the 1920s in Germany. In the 1960s, the emergence of hi-fi, high-fidelity sound, corresponded with a shift to stereo sound. Along with the development of hi-fi came the hi-fi buff, the kind of person who spent huge amounts of money to get the highest quality audio in their living room. Cassette tape, on the other hand, traded quality with portability and led to the Walkman, hugely successful device, and then later we have the CD, a digital storage mechanism which became the industry standard in the 1980s. In more recent times, portability of recorded music has been an important concern. While fidelity means capturing and keeping as much information as possible from the sound waves reaching the microphone. 
in digital terms is capturing as much data as possible and creating larger and larger files. A compression format like MP3 throws a lot of this data away in order to make the files smaller and music more portable or more streamable. Audio recording works by capturing the wave patterns of sound in the air via a microphone and storing the information gathered on some medium. A wax cylinder, an acetate disc, vinyl LP, reel-to-reel -reel tape, cassette tape, CD, digital file. All the information is stored on this one medium. But there is another approach possible, one which led to the creation of MIDI, and I'll be discussing the revolutionaries responsible for this invention in week three.